at menopause 20 years ago, you were done. You, you know, you were just a shriveled up grandma. You couldn't be sexual. It was fine if you peed your pants, right? Like, you know, just put on a diaper and, and, and sit in the corner and be quiet. And he was treating a patient who was 35, who had just had her second baby and had gone into her OBGYN postpartum and said, I'm losing control of my bladder. Like, what should I do? And her OBGYN literally just said, well, that's what happens when you have babies and offered her no solutions whatsoever. Um, so she had to go and research her own solutions. And luckily he um, was able to use these technologies to treat her symptoms. And she was having great relief as well. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm going to be talking about bladder incontinence, incontinence in general, stress incontinence, vaginal issues, vaginal health. And to do that, I'm bringing on two of my nurse practitioner pals from Tacoma, Washington, Shannon Keenan and Kara Scanlon. Now, they're going to be helping me out to describe the treatment that I received back earlier this summer when I was in town. And holy cow, did it blow me away. After two treatments, no more stress incontinence. So peeing when I sneeze, things of that nature, jumping rope. I can do it now without being terrified or having to go to the bathroom before it, during it, after it. The other biggie, my back does not hurt. I have a herniated disc, but it was connected somehow. There's some connection there in terms of the pain to pelvic floor. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about what devices they use to help me out. These are radio frequency devices by a company called InMode. We're gonna talk about something called the Forma V. We're gonna talk about the V tone. We're gonna to talk about amorphous. So you're gonna hear these words, what they are, are devices that really can help change your quality of life. So if you are running to the bathroom and sometimes having accidents, maybe you have to map out where every bathroom is every time you go out. Or maybe, you're not going out because you're afraid of what's going to happen with the bladder and you're sick and tired of wearing pads, diapers, depends, etc. all those things. Not cool. Well, I want you to know you do not have to live like this. There are solutions. There are ways to help you. And, and so let's introduce you to Shannon Keenan and Kara Scanlon. Hey, health junkies. I have a fun podcast for you today because I have some local ladies from Tacoma on and I love bringing on my folks from Tacoma, especially in this case, because we're going to be talking about incontinence and things of that nature where a lot of women don't necessarily want to talk about the things that are happening, but there are solutions and we need to know about it. So Shannon, Keenan and Kara Scanlon, welcome to the Health Fix podcast. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. Well, ladies, you are the team that is Empowered Med Spa. And of course, with any podcast, I always like to start off with, how'd you two meet? And and how did you two decide that you needed to save us ladies from our aging issues? What what was the impetus? Give us this backstory on the two of you. Well, I was going through my master's program to become a nurse practitioner. And um, in my particular program, they require us to find our own preceptee mentors. Um, and so I was blowing up Kara's facility and she graciously responded to one of my fax and or emails and or handwritten letters, <laughs> um, agreed to meet with me, graciously took me on as a student. And then um, I joke and I say that I just attached myself to her from here henceforth. Hey, <laughs> so nothing wrong with that. Shannon and I... Shannon and I have maintained our friendship since. And um, when she came across this technology that we're going to be talking about, um, she reached out to me because I have um, specialized in women's health for 18 years and said, you have to see this technology. She invited me to a conference in Portland, and I was just amazed. I was immediately excited that we had some answers to some of these problems um, that women have over our lifetime um, that we maybe just don't want to have surgery, for, you know, yeah. so it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing that women look at in terms of getting older, I mean, we've seen, right, society shows us like, well, there's the diapers, right? We see the commercials, right? The Depends start showing up. And I was telling Shannon the other day, I like saw a advertisement for Depends 
in a, a local Dollar General because I live in the middle of nowhere and that's the only store we have. And there was a man who looked ripped and like fit with Depends on. And I'm like, what? What are we marketing to here? What is going on? And now, of course, with all the fancy underwear and stuff like that, that we can have highly absorbent underwear. I'm like, yeah, that's nice. But I don't want to roll that way. That's not my jam. So let's let's jump in and talk a little bit about the different devices that you have. And I'm going to kind of leave it up to you guys in terms of going through, like, if someone is having, let's say, minimal to moderate types of incontinence issues, what would we use first? What kind of technology are we thinking about? And then we'll go into kind of the more prolapse, more severe situations for, for folks so that we can kind of get a baseline from here. Excellent. So I'll kind of take the lead on that one just because I myself, <clears throat> um, prior to treatment, I also had mild symptoms. Um, so, you know, I think just owning a uterus and time mm -hmm. and gravity will lead many of us to these conditions later in life. Um, weakened pelvic floor, um, just again, gravity, aging, loss of elasticity, collagen, and the tissues. We don't just see it on the outside. We're also experiencing it on internally. Um, so for me, a great initial treatment plan would be the VTOM, which is the electromuscular stimulation. So think of it as like a TENS unit. We're creating muscle contractions, repeated. Uh, it's a 30 minute session. And I think you get somewhere near 300,000 pulses in that time period. The kegels we can't ever do. And so um, we do a series of six of those to strengthen up the pelvic floor. I also did one Morpheus eight session, and we'll speak a little bit more to that in a moment as to what that does for the tissues inside. Um, after my first V-tone session, my one, one 30 minute session, I have not peased, <laughs> lost my, lost my urine with sneezing or coughing since not once. Um, I, after my first session, I did have a little bit of, um, stress incontinence when I was playing tug of war with my dog, but after the second session that also went away. So pretty mild symptoms, phenomenal relief, completed my series of six. I did my one Morpheus treatment. Um, and I'll do another one, but I'll, again, we'll speak to that a little bit later. Um, phenomenal relief is in terms of urinary stress incontinence, urge incontinence, um, and then also as you and I discussed previously too, my low back pain is gone. <laughs> so, um, I've had chronic low back pain for, well, since February of 23, when I decided to go and train for run a half marathon without training. And so, um, <laughs> not advised. And then, um, <laughs> but my relief has been profound, profound since then. Nice. Yeah. You know, I kind of found the same type of results from using the V-tone in the form of V-treatment that you had. I mean, I only had one technical round, I mean, two two days apart, and we quick snuck it into a quick, quick session. So I had two of the V-tone and one of the form of V. And like, yeah, I, I have not had any sneezing incontinence, and I have not had any pain while running. And, and it was crazy because I remember during the session, I was telling you, like, I feel like you're like loosening this little like tension up in my right, like upper part of my uterus or something or pelvic floor or something. It was in there deep. I, I couldn't tell. But yeah, I, I'm still running, still feeling good. And of course, I'm planning to come back. But I was like, oh, my God, I have to tell people about this. So all right, that's a little bit on the V-tone. Now, tell us a little bit more about the more extensive treatment for folks that have a little bit more moderate to severe situations. Sure. So um, we'll start with Forma. Yeah. Uh, Forma V is a radio frequency treatment that's used to um, stimulate collagen production. So we're trying to um, improve the elasticity of the vaginal wall, the bladder, um, and also, as you had mentioned, it, it kind of helps kind of release the fascia. Um, and in conjunction with the V-tone, what we find is just significant improvement in pelvic floor function. Um, the Forma also has the advantage of being able to simulate collagen production externally on the vulva um, and the labia. And the advantage to that, other than cosmetic, um, is really when we talk about women who are really active, 
over time, our more sensitive parts of our um, vagina are exposed because our labia lose elasticity and fullness. And so what I found, especially in my patients who love to run or walk, is they don't feel chafed after they exercise because those labia are plump and protecting those more sensitive tissues. Mm. That's important. That's important. Something to think about that. Like I've not personally experienced, but I know that people do talk about it. And of course, being in the realm where where I am, we're working with different creams and things, right? To help with vaginal lubrication and things of that nature. I find it that the creams are great, but they can only go so far. And mm-hmm. that's where that's where this this technology to me is like, oh my gosh, this is so impressive. So I'd love to hear from from either one of you. You guys can tag team however you want to go about it. But I'd love to hear some stories of other clients in terms of what they were experiencing and how the different technology has really helped to to change them um, in terms of their health, their their experiences, different things. I, I love stories. We love stories here. So if you guys have some good ones, I'd love to hear kind of what your favorite stories are. Well, I think, you know, my favorite is um, I have an 83 year old patient that I've been treating. She's had stress, you know, mixed incontinence, overactive bladder for probably a couple of decades now, Um, had a couple of babies, one naturally, one by cesarean, has always had a weakened pelvic floor, pretty much has been um, using consumables, pads, diapers, et cetera, since the second child because of her incontinence. Um, she came to me and she told me she wears her watch at night and she was clocking about 260 steps per night, getting up to void, um, in her bathrooms, only maybe 15, 20 feet away from her bedroom. Uh, so which is pretty profound getting up, I think probably close to eight to 10 times a night to, to void. Um, after probably the second week, so one more VSB session, two V tone sessions, she told me that she was down to 60 steps per night um, in terms of her overactive bladder. And now that her treatment is complete, um, she she was able to go on a cruise where she did not wear a pad the whole time. Um, she was only up a couple of times at night uh, to void and her quality of life has significant, I mean, just profound, profoundly improved. She doesn't have to pee before she leaves the house. She doesn't have to pee as soon as she gets to the, wherever she may be going. She and her husband are looking to buy an RV and they feel confident now that they can actually travel without pulling over at every rest stop to um, allow her to use the restroom. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> huge. That's huge. huge. I mean, and especially for so long because being 83 and then after her second child, my gosh, was 40 years more, more than 40. that. Like, <laughs> really honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. And you think too, it's um, I've had her, you know, she's been my patient for several years. I've had her, in pelvic floor therapy in conjunction, I mean, prior to almost two years prior. So she's done three or four month stents a couple times a year, um, which, is, which is obviously very helpful for her as well. Um, and I've encouraged her to actually continue with PT therapy or pelvic floor therapy because of the, now she has that muscle memory. She can connect which muscle she's actually supposed to be contracting um, as opposed to just thinking of starting and stopping your stream of urine. She's actually getting full pelvic floor movement and and contraction. Wow. I mean, I know for sure, like, I was like, wow, I have never felt these parts of my pelvic floor before when when you had the V-tone. And I was like, oh, well, what's this? You know, and and it's cool because I don't think many of us can connect exactly what we're supposed to feel down Mm -hmm. below. You know, even, I mean, with PT, pelvic floor PT, you can definitely get a sense, but like actually having something contract with that amount of, you know, and, and folks who are listening, it's not, it's not super strong and, and, you know, Shannon and, and Kara will, will help you direct like how strong of a impulse, but like, I actually was able to turn it up after a while, after I got used to it. Cause at first I was like, okay, this is weird. This is different. And then as we turned it up, I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Now I know exactly that feeling. And I've actually used that now to be able to connect in while running, connect in while doing some other physical fitness stuff that I had had some issues with before. So fascinating there. So- that. And that's what she said too. She said, I can, she's like, I've never experienced this, this sensation of contracting those muscles. She loved it. She absolutely loved it. No doubt. I've no doubt. I'm definitely hooked. So Kara, tell us a little bit about a story that, that you have about some of some pretty good transformation. So, um, I'm thinking of a 72 year old, uh, client of mine who, um, 
complained about just not being rested all the time. And it turns out, you know, on, on further discussion that she was also getting up, you know, five to six times a night to, to empty her bladder. She also had um, um, some incontinence um, at, like she has to, she had to know where the bathrooms were at all times. She had had episodes where she was looking for a bathroom at a place and, and lost control of her urine um, to the point where she always packed another pair of um, underwear and pants with her at all times. She wore a pad. Um, but she said, you know, one of the biggest um, things that bothered her most was that she had to use so much time and energy to map out bathrooms, to, to plan her life around going to the bathroom. And, and, um, you know, that just wears on you. Plus, you know, her sleep was terrible. So when she came in for her first treatment, um, she actually couldn't even, um, finish the 15 minute forma session without going to the bathroom two times. This is how bad her incontinence was. Um, and now after her three forma and, um, six tone sessions, she says that she gets up maybe one time a night, um, and she's sleeping through the night quite often. Um, she doesn't worry about mapping out bathrooms because she knows that she, um, when her bladder wants to relax, that she can tense up her pelvic floor how we're supposed to, so that we can hold in our urine. Um, and and mainly, she's just so happy about the um, the amount of energy she has because she's not having to map her whole life around her incontinence. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, it becomes a full time job, really, to research. Like, okay, if I'm going to go out, so then then of course it has people not leaving their homes. And, and this is what I see, too, for a lot of my my older clients. Now, you guys are giving examples of older uh, clients. A lot of folks are going, well, well I'm not that old. Is this going to is this going to help me? And of course, I'm 46. And, you know, I think a lot of people will be thinking, well, could I use this as a preventative type of thing if I have some mild symptoms and nothing major? Absolutely. And that's where I, I kind of start to gauge too. Where can we start to get the word out um, in these postpartum mamas, in these um, patients who need rehabilitation if they've had an injury or an accident? Because something like the V-tone, a series of V-tone could be profound in prevention. And that's how I'm going to anticipate using it for the rest of my life is I am now cured, if you will. Like I'm going to continue to do intermittent sessions in addition to other modalities, you know, um, I, I'm a fan of a hormone replacement, you know, needed for vaginal dryness and or your um, recurring UTIs. Um, but I, I absolutely look at it as a prevention modality. If we can absolutely do that, there's so many things that we are better off, as you know, preventing rather than treating down the road. Yeah, yeah. Kara, what's your take? What have you seen and kind of things? you? So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's interesting because, and, and Shannon and I often use the examples of older women, because as we age, we're not able to produce as much collagen and the symptoms do tend to be worse. And, you know, if we are seeing great improvement in this age of women, then, you know, these younger women are definitely going to respond better when they can still produce large amounts of of collagen and their pelvic floor integrity, um, you know, their musculature is stronger and, and just more receptive to treatment. Um, when I was in training, um, I was training with a urogynecologist in uh, Newport, California, and he was treating a patient who was 35, who had just had her second baby and had gone into her OBGYN postpartum and said, I'm losing control of my bladder. Like, what should I do? And her OBGYN literally just said, well, that's what happens when you have babies and offered her no solutions whatsoever. Um, so she had to go and research her own solutions. And luckily he um, was able to use these technologies to treat her symptoms. And she was having great relief as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I mean, unfortunately that is common. Um, I, it's, I've heard all the spectrum of like, suck it up. That's the way it is. And, you know, it's like, Gosh, I, I don't want to live like that. And I don't want anyone else to, to either. Now we've talked about urinary incontinence. One of the other things is fecal incontinence. Have you guys had any cases where that's improved with using this technology as it does impact the pelvic floor? I have not. I have someone on my radar with whom um, experiences both urinary and fecal incontinence. And um, it's a matter of financing for her, which um, she's working on. 
Um, but I'm very eager to, she, I mean, she's got a, lots of comorbidities, autoimmune stuff, but she's always had um, concerns about fecal incontinence and, you know, she ebbs and flows through it, but she's on my radar. She knows about the, the technology. So I will keep you posted if we mm-hmm. get the opportunity to treat her specifically. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and same here. I mean, I think what we've focused on is, you know, the technology was developed for incontinence for vaginal health. Sure. Um, and so a lot of, um, a lot of the clients we're seeing are, are attracted because of that. And so um, I do know that um, they are doing ongoing studies um, about fecal incontinence and other things that, that just have not been released yet. Um, but the, as I mentioned, the urogynecologist in Newport, California, um, he is part of these studies. And so we will start seeing more data as those studies are, um, you know, uh, evaluated and then concluded. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, it's one of those things where nobody wants to talk about it in the office. A lot of times it's like pulling teeth to get the information out of my patients, but it does seem that we are, having a lot more of that going on here too, as we're getting older. And, you know, obviously I'm getting older, my practice is getting older. So I see that quite, quite often now. So I think now I'd love to kind of go into the technology a little bit more in terms of what someone would expect when they come into a visit, because I think, you know, we imagine all kinds of things, right? As to like, what in the world are they doing? And, you know, I talked about the little wand before on social media and a couple of patients were like, what kind of wand is this thing? You know, in the V-tone in terms of being kind of like a little um, teardrop kind of device. And so I would love for you guys to kind of go into like, what would a procedure look like? You, one of you could prescri- describe the V-tone, maybe the form of V, I, I don't know. I'll let you guys do it. You're the experts. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, um, the V tone, as you as you described, is a uh, teardropped shape um, uh, device that's inserted into the vagina. It um, stimulates muscle contraction. Um, it's um, as you as you mentioned, it's an interesting feeling, especially when you've never um, really felt your pelvic floor contract or had to, your mind tied to those muscles. Um, but women should not expect discomfort at all. And it's important for them to also know with this technology that we um, instruct them on how to increase their own um, pelvic floor um, stimulation as, as they increase um, the, um, the power that is to the device. And they are absolutely in charge of that because we can't feel what they're feeling. Right. I have some women that, you know, it, it dials from one to 50. And I have some women that get to 12 and they feel like, wow, this is really intense. And I think I'm going to hang out here. Um, and then the, the 72 year old patient that I mentioned earlier, um, on her third session was like, how far up does this go? And she was the first one to discover it went to 50. So, um, (laughs) but, um, you know, it's important for women to know that they're in control of that so that they can be in charge of their own body and that sensation and, and, you know, push it as far as they feel comfortable. Sure, sure. I know I didn't feel like one side of my pelvis during the first session for like quite a bit of it. I could not feel the right side, which is the side that I have a disc herniation on um, that is technically a surgical case, but I refuse surgery. And now that I'm <laughs> seeing that this is working for me, I'm like, well, why would I get surgery now? Um, but I, I did notice that, yeah, I didn't feel it. I don't think I could go past 12. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, if what that says about me, but I think it's just, it is what it is. We, we keep it where we can handle it. Now, what about the form of V? Because that felt like I was having a warm, like, uh, like a hot stone massage to my vaginal tissue. And for those of you who are like, what? I would not want heat there. I'm like, guys, it, it actually felt relaxing. So I'm going to let you take away with that, Shannon, and kind of give us the, the rundown on what's happening. Sure. So it is a wand. It, I would say absolutely. And I apologize. I didn't bring any up here to, to demonstrate, but um, it's probably slightly wider than the, the width of my finger. It's very narrow. The tip does spread out a little bit more because it has that bipolar radio frequency at the tip of the wand. Uh, we use a little lubrication, either ultrasound gel or some water-based lubricant to insert the wand there are measurements. So we know basically we will get to, if you have a cervix, we will get to the tip of the cervix, pull back and not insert beyond that. If you don't have a cervix, we, you know, maybe I doubt totally, but maybe hit the vaginal wall and same thing, pull back. Once that if we've got those safe measurements down, we're literally just using that wand in and around the vaginal wall on the tissue, heating up, um, 
InMode is the manufacturer of this device, and it has been repeatedly said that InMode is the absolute master of temperature feedback, milliseconds of feedback. So we have an indication on our, our screen that we are heating you to the desired temperature uh, with the appropriate amount of energy so that we are not overheating the tissue. But the point is to elicit enough heat, hot stone, if you will, to the tissue that we're creating an inflammatory response. Unfortunately, we were having a little bit of technological issues with the audio in this podcast. So I'm gonna jump in and talk about what Shannon was saying about the Forma V. So the Forma V is a radio frequency device. It's, it's a wand, it's about an inch in diameter. It's thin, it's inserted vaginally, which may sound kind of scary, but honestly, you can barely feel it. It almost feels like someone's giving you an internal massage. Now, while that might sound kind of creepy, the truth is I felt the heat. I felt the device sliding on the vaginal wall and it felt like someone was releasing the tissue. Much like a myofascial kind of slow spreading massage, it felt like that. In fact, at one point, I felt something in my right upper vaginal area release, which is crazy because I'm not going to get a massage really in that area. And so having a device that can get in there, get some heat in the area and help you is incredible. And so literally Shannon wanted folks to know that when you have the device in, if you, if it's too warm, you know, she can always control that. If it feel if something feels off, it's triggering something for you. She can always stop the treatment. It's not like you're, you're, once you're in, you're, you're committed. You can definitely take little breaks, but it is common according to Shannon that you can feel releases and many clients will talk about feeling a release much like I did. In fact, during the actual session, I was like, whoa, whoa, I can feel something. And so <laughs> we had a really good laugh about that. But the truth is, is that these things, how else are we going to have that, right? A lot of times I, I, I have patients coming into my practice, they're talking about pelvic floor pain. They're talking about pain with sex. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Nothing seems to relieve it. Well, this could be your answer because i'll be honest i tried pelvic floor therapy i tried different things in it nothing seemed to get that one little spot shannon got it with the forma v so something i really want you guys to be thinking about here you know we have the capacity to fully take care of our bodies huge huge so with the wand, she can also work not only on the internal vaginal wall and the vaginal tissue, she can work around the urethral meatus, which is the opening where you urinate. She can also work on your labia majora, the bigger lips, and the labia minora, the little lips, because sometimes those will prolapse, meaning though they will drop down, especially after you've had multiple children. And this is one way to help tighten things up because what the form of V is doing is it with the heat and the radio frequency, it's creating a little bit of an inflammatory response. It's triggering you to make more collagen and also to bring more blood flow to the area. So much like the treatments that we have on our face, right? Micro needling, all of the different radio frequency treatments you could do on your face. Same thing applies to your vaginal tissue. It's, it's the same skin. I don't know why we have this disconnect, but here we are helping to, to really spread the word that there are options for you. There are options for you. Kara says it really well later on the podcast, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just tease you a little bit. She says it really well about women now. We don't wanna be sitting around. We wanna be doing things. We wanna be sexual. We wanna feel good. These kind of devices can help you with that. And I can't tell you how good I feel now being able to run and not have pain incredible. I've worked on my feet. I've worked on my knees. I've worked on my hips. I've worked on my low back. Go figure. It was this one little thing in that pelvic floor. So now, even if there's tenderness, even if there's scar tissue in the vaginal wall, in the vaginal area, Shannon can work with that with the form of V. So this is something to really think about. Um, prolapse also can be helped with this too. And so really it's about a 15 to 20 minute treatment and she's definitely going to be listening to you, she, you know. And of course, I don't imagine that everyone's going to be able to go to Tacoma, Washington. There are other folks trained out there. We'll make sure that you can see where folks may be in your area. But the point is, is you're in control of these treatments. 15 to 20 minutes, repeat them at a minimum of three times. 
I've already done two and I, I can tell you I feel amazing. I am going to do some more, no doubt, and I'm going to do them as a preventative. Kind of like every year, just repeat to help keep my tissue healthy. Much like I would work on my skin, I'm gonna work on my vaginal skin too. All right, now after the treatment, I did feel like something was done. You, you feel it for like one to three days. She said that's absolutely common and it's also common um, to you know, just just feel maybe even a little itching as the body's working to heal the area. Kara will talk about that a little bit later with the Morpheus treatment. Now, also, there's downtime. Yeah, you might feel it for one to three days. There's also like best to lay off a of sex for at least two days just to let the area heal, which I think that's fair enough. After you've spent the money to help heal up something, why not let it rest a little bit and then it can be much better because as Shannon mentions, the orgasms and things of that nature are even better once you've used this device for a little while. So something to also think about. All right, let's get back into the podcast. Afterwards, I did feel like, it kind of felt like I had had sex, right? Because there was a lot of like mo motion to the vaginal wall and, and it lasted for like three days. I felt that quite a bit. And I was like, wow, I must have really needed some, some, I guess, circulation to the area. What's typical for people to feel afterwards? Do you have like a gauge on that? Exactly what you just described. It's usually about one to three days where you might feel um, yeah, like there was some intercourse or there was a treatment, they've had a treatment done. Um, more so, I think if we do longer sessions as opposed to shorter sessions, um, again, we're basing it on patient tolerance. So I usually will check in with my patients when they come home a little first. Soothing warm there. And, and it definitely works to, to just relax. I felt like my whole like urine wall and probably even some of my public floor. I, I feel like it was just really relaxing. Um, I had to take my headphones off. They're squeezing my head too much today and take those guys off. There we go. Get comfortable. So, you know, when at, well, let's, let's put it this way afterwards, I did feel like it kind of felt like I had had sex, right? Cause it, it, there was a lot of like mo motion to the vaginal wall and, and it lasted for like three days. I felt that quite a bit. And I was like, wow, I must've really needed some, some, I guess, circulation. Now I'm going to have Kara talk all about the Morpheus with microneedling. So it sounds super scary to have microneedling in your vaginal tissue. Know that it can be numbed up, not the end of the world. And that in a lot of cases, the lowered pain receptors in the vaginal area make it really easy to do. Much different than having microneedling on your face. But Kara's the expert, let's have her tell you. In moderate to severe symptoms, we use a device called Morpheus V, which is radio frequency, but in conjunction with that is microneedling. And as we've said before, we know a lot of women cringe when they think about needles in the vagina, um, but it's important for women to know that, first of all, we don't have a lot of nerve endings in the vaginal canal. So um, as far as that goes, um, it would be minimally painful. However, we also numb women up so that they only feel pressure. Um, and what this device does is it passes radio frequency at di different depths um, for deeper um, collagen stimulation so that we're getting better um, elasticity and better tissue rejuvenation in women with moderate to severe symptoms. And this of course includes um, the wall of the bladder that sits anteriorly in the vagina. Um, it can help improve um, blood flow and collagen stimulation in the urethra and urethral meatus to help protect us um, from leakage and from recurrent urinary tract infections. Um, it can improve blood flow to the clitoris and women find that they um, may have easier um, to obtain orgasms or even um, more satisfying orgasms. Um, but regardless, th this, this technology is, is used for the more severe cases or women who don't respond to the less invasive um, technologies. And um, I think we talked about downtime before and the downtime on this is a little longer. Women are sore for a couple of days um, you can't have that. Um, you can't have vaginal intercourse for um, probably two to five days. Um, so we have women plan for that. 
Um, and sometimes there is some post treatment itching as they heal. Um, but overall, what we're seeing is that they are back to um, baseline um, with improvement of symptoms often uh, within a week. Kara mentions improved symptoms in a week. Whoa. Um, especially in severe cases with prolapse and, and In order to really maximize, you know, kind of invest in this, we want you to have maximal results. And so I sent her back to her primary care and said, hey, uh, go ahead and give talk to her about vaginal estrogen, um, at least temporarily. Um, and I wanted her to be on that for at least a month before she came in for her first treatment um, so that she can get really good results because if her if her um, tissue isn't estrogenized and it's not going to respond as well. And we even talked about just briefly that she may need surgery in the future, but as as um, Shannon spoke about the evolve, you know, if she does need um, surgery, improving her tissues and improving her pelvic floor muscles will make her surgical outcome that much better as well. So we're not necessarily saying we are a solution to surgery, but even if a woman needs surgery to, to maximize outcomes and to really make it so they get maximal relief from whatever symptoms they're suffering from, um, this can be a, a integral part of their treatment plan. Mm. That makes sense. And and I'm glad you bring that up because, yeah, I mean, I think even Shannon and I saw someone on Instagram that was kind of saying, yeah, I, it only got, gave me 50%, you know, results. And we're like, well, yeah, but where did you start from? So. Well, and you know, if you're only paying 50% of the time to me, that seems like a great increase too. Um, I think it was, I, I think we, um, we have to realize that we cannot turn back the clock 100%, right? We, we're, we're not going to turn um, your um, pelvic floor into a, the pelvic floor of a 20-year-old who has never had children, but um, we can help turn that back some and give you significant improvement and, and quality of life because really it wasn't until about 20 years ago in medicine that we even started looking to the quality of life of women, especially postmenopausal, right? At menopause, 20 years ago, you were done. You you know, you were just a shriveled up grandma. You couldn't be sexual. It was fine if you peed your pants, right? Like, you know, just put on a diaper and and, and sit in the corner and be quiet. And, and we know that women want to have an amazing quality of life. We live a third of our lives in menopause. And, um, you know, we want to be sexual beings, you know, as much as that, as much as that we feel like we need that in our lives. Um, postmenopausal as well. And so I think it's women standing up and demanding to, to have this quality of life and to have improvement in their quality of life that has really started changing the tide, but we have a long way to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, we're just starting to really gain momentum. And I think that, yeah, we have a lot of different you know, things that are going to probably come up over the next, you know, couple of years and technology is going to keep getting better and better. And it sounds like you guys are at the forefront of it. So you'll stay on top of, you know, the next evolutions of the V-Forma and, and all of the the things here and, and kind of keep moving forward. So, of course, having said that, my next question is, all right, what's next? What kind of things are you looking at to add to help women at this point? As far as devices go, mm -hmm. we're good for this year. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, what it, when you, when you take on a new device, um, you always are good and relieved to a degree, right? To say, okay, it's doing what we, what the, what the white papers are saying. It's doing what the doctors we train with are saying. Um, and now it's our turn to maximize the results for our patients. And so we're figuring out more and more about, okay, maybe, maybe our gals with more serious um, or significant symptoms, maybe we need an extra couple of V-tones. Maybe um, when we initially thought a Forma was going to do it, maybe we need to switch to Morpheus. So for us, it's the anecdotal pieces of maximizing patient treatment outcomes. So I think for me, I'd rather just focus on maximizing outcomes than the next um, device. However, I will say the device that we have, the, um, 
also does do, we talked about the external, the tone um, with skin type, the non-invasive, the device still does have a Morpheus face and a Morpheus body. And those technologies continue to improve in terms of safety and efficacy. So this device will also can do, if you are concerned about fine lines, wrinkles, needing to regenerate some collagen in the face, neck, decollete, or around the abdomen, arms, et cetera, um, this device will do that as well. And again, that technology continues to improve um, just because of the sheer research and, and determination of the unknown company. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I I think, you know, it's just thinking outside the box and also thinking about like, yeah, how can you how can you enhance the the like what what's going to get the most effect in terms of treatment protocols and things of that nature. So all good stuff, all good stuff. Gosh, I'm glad you guys are local. I'm glad we have options for patients in Tacoma. And of course, if folks are out of state, you can always pop in too. There's no saying that these guys wouldn't take someone that came in from out of town. I'm guessing you may even have folks that are coming from like across the across the bridge and also probably on the other side of the state too sometimes. Absolutely. As far as we know, there's only one other there's one other device in Western Washington and it's up North. And um, from what we hear, of course, um, what you hear is maybe not always what's happening, but um, that they are not doing the Morpheus V. And what we have found is the Morpheus V has a really great niche and is essential in a lot of women's care. And if we want to maximize outcomes that we have to have that available. And so um, as Shannon was saying, you know, we sometimes switch gear. I had a woman who started on Forma and when she did not respond as well as we had hoped, we switched to Morpheus and we're just seeing just amazing response from that. Um, and she was nervous about it because she's had Morpheus face and she found that painful, but this she finds completely comfortable. So, um, you know, it's important for us to make sure that our patients are getting the best outcomes that they can get. And sometimes we have to switch plan of care, um, but we're more than willing to do that. Awesome. Awesome. I have no doubt that you guys are going to be helping a lot of folks. And I'm really glad that I know you and have this resource. Thanks again for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's really awesome. And just appreciate you reaching out. Thank you. No problem. Empowered Med Spa, just in case you guys are wondering, maybe you're in the Tacoma area, is located at 1310 South Union Building A. It's Suite 202. And uh, if you're looking for them on, on Google Maps or whatever, it's the zip code 98405. If you want to get in touch with them via phone, it's 253-240-4543. Now, if you're not in the Tacoma, Washington area, that is okay. Head over to my podcast notes at Dr. Spelled Out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E-N-D.com, and I will have the listing for how to find practitioners in your area. Thanks for watching another episode of the Health Fix Podcast. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, Please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. 